I feel sorry for my foot. Just stubbed itself on your dumb skateboard. Man, these little piggies are gonna cry all the way to work. Can I finish the garbage? Boy, Ruthie, you're all heart. Put away the skateboard first. Okay. And do something about the rest of this room. Bet if you clean it up, you might find another kid in here. Thank you, Ruthie. That's a big improvement. Dad, we'll clean up the place today, honest. Only I've got to study for a chemistry test, and Ruthie's got to learn a whole play by tomorrow. She'll get killed. Honey, I told you to learn that thing two weeks ago. Well, two weeks ago, I still had two weeks. Well, now you only got one day. Yeah, school holiday. Well, if I got to work, you guys got to work, too. The place has got to be clean. This is a big night. Remember, Morgan's bringing that lady over from Working Woman magazine. I'm going to be the centerfold. <laughs> You gonna pose in the nude? Not with his knobby knees. Just be careful I don't put both you guys over these knobby knees. Now, there are my feet. Where are my shoes? On the chair where you left them. Can I finish the garbage now? Yeah. Thank you. By the way, either one of you guys seen my watch? No. Ruthie, have you seen Dad's watch? What? Have you seen Dad's watch? Yes, right here. <laughs> Here's about this. <laughs> Gee, I I'm sorry, Dad. Maybe we can have it fixed. Maybe Jimmy Carter can solve inflation. <laughs> Aren't you gonna yell, Dad? No. Man with a broken foot and a busted 3995 watch that he's treasured for nine years doesn't yell. Man like that just hops to his car, which sits on the street because some dummy took his parking space, and then drives serenely to his place of employment. No, that kind of a man doesn't yell at his children. <laughs> Rotten kid! <laughs> Diane, I want you to go to the market and buy some stuff. All we got in that refrigerator is a six-pack of beer and an onion that's beginning to sprout. Okay. Ruthie, if this place isn't clean by the time I get home, I'm going to place you in the black hole of Calcutta with two scorpions and 13 cobras and your sister. My sister? That's inhuman. I love you guys. We love, love you, too. too. We better get busy. I still have to study, and my stomach feels weird. Come on, you start on the oven. Why me? Because you're the one who blew up the potato in there. Well, you're the one who didn't tell me to puncture it first. <laughs> Come on, I'll help. The oven cleaner's under the sink. Oh! What is it? 
Remember that dirty, creepy, awful mouse we set a trap for? <laughs> we killed the cute little thing. <laughs> Ew, we'll throw it out. You throw it out. I don't want to get the plague. <laughs> I'm not touching it. You found it. It's your mouse. You set the trap. It was your cheese. How about the little kid down the hall? I bet he'd just love to have a dead mouse. <laughs> Ruthie, you can't give him a dead mouse. Then I'll charge him a quarter. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Would you please tell my sister she won't get the plague picking up a dead mouse? Will you please tell her to pick it up herself? I didn't think they even allowed you to have pets in this building. <laughs> Here, hold this, honey. I'll get it for you. Oh, thank you. Okay, where is that fuzzy little sucker? <laughs> it's over there. Uh, don't look at the oven. It's a mess. Mm, no wonder the mouse died. <laughs> Doesn't your mother know to punch your potatoes? We live here with our dad. Well, that explains a lot. Okay, where's Tricky Mickey? <laughs> it's under the sink. Under the sink. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Give me a paper bag. Oh. We'll give him a nice funeral. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's your mouth. That's no way to speak of the dead. <laughs> By the way, I'm Leona Wilson. I'm Diane Alder. I'm Ruthie Alder. Well, we're not exactly the Supremes, but I got a feeling we're gonna hum together pretty well. <laughs> yeah, you work around here a lot? No more than I have to. Bye. Hope you don't run into a dead cat. <laughs> Boy, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Leona. Oh, that's okay, honey. You're welcome. Diane, we better get this house cleaned up or Dad's gonna kill us. Yeah, I don't know when Dad thinks I'm gonna get my studying done. I have to learn that whole play. Does your father think house cleaning is more important than studying? Well, today he does. He's got an important meeting here tonight. Well, what does your father do for a living? Well, he has a radio talk show. People call him up and he says stuff like, uh, Listen, Alice, generally speaking, women are generally speaking. <laughs> Poor babies. Listen, Ruthie, I'm going to take Dad's suit to the cleaners. And you vacuum all the rooms, and I'll take care of the closet later. And while I'm out, I'll go to the drugstore. What for? I don't feel too good. Wait a minute. Wait just a minute. You going to bed, Diane? No, I'm okay, honest. You've got a fever, baby. You're going to bed. What about the work? Forget about the work. The All-American House Cleaning and Serendipity Company just showed up. <laughs> well, Leona, we can't ask you to do all the work. You're not asking, honey. I'm telling you. Now, Diane, you get into a bathrobe, baby. And, Ruthie, you get to that play. You know, I better put some liquids in her. Have you got any fruit juice in the house? No. But we got a bunch of Dad's beer. <laughs> Dad's beer? You poor, poor babies. Well, folks, time is uh, running out for today, but I did want to remind you that tomorrow we're going to have a special guest, uh, Mr. Sam Twitchell, who runs a goose uh, ranch on uh, Coos Bay. And uh, this will be, a, I think, a real uh, highlight in your life, uh, particularly those of you who are real goose liver lovers. Um, <laughs> Old Sam, by the way, did develop a new aphrodisiac and has uh, goosed up his geese population about 82%. <laughs> so uh, we'll be looking forward to talking to Sam. And just remember, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. With that, I'll say goodbye, and we'll talk again tomorrow. <laughs> uh, well, where did our chubby little engineer uh, race off to? Oh, it's payday. He's got a date. No, oh, no, uh, this isn't payday. Not his, hers. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, wait a second, Larry. I just want to show you the new dress I bought. How do you like it? It's very nice. What's it for? For your interview tonight. I was going to wear a blue suit tonight. <laughs> Larry, this is important for both of us. Boy, a photo article with Margot Shaw is really big time. With a little drive, a little luck, a little cleavage, we could go TV. Cleavage? Boy, you better have more in there than I got in here. Larry, listen, this is our big break. Now, if we play this right, I could be producing TV specials, a miniseries, or executive producer on a three-hour docudrama, Jim Neighbors, A Man and His Music. Boy, I sure wouldn't want to miss that one.
What about me? I'll leave you a pass. <laughs> Look, Morgan, I, I really like what it is I'm doing. I mean, I, I don't want the big chance. I know you don't, and it's driving me up a wall. <laughs> Did you clean your place? Yes, ma'am, my daughters are helping me. Even under the sofa? Last time I looked, there were two pair of socks and a piece of lettuce. <laughs> so it is in the Taj Mahal. Look, if it'll make you happy, I'll call the girls and see if they got our happy little home all clean and ready, okay? Okay. All the residents. Huh? Um, who is this? Leona. Who is this? Larry Alder. Larry Alder. The big honcho himself. Some father you are playing games on the radio while your daughters are home doing your chores when they should be doing their homework. Who is this? Just don't you concern yourself about it, big shot. But you know it would be a big help if you left something in this house besides beer, an onion, and a dead mouse. <laughs> What'd you say this play of yours was about, honey? It's about Rome in the olden days. I'm this Roman lady, and I'm married to this Roman guy. He's in real good with this other Roman guy that has a friend. Only the other guy hates him because the other Roman guy didn't tell him about the emperor. They all die except for me. I'm pregnant. <laughs> Don't you try to tell that again or you just might have that baby. You know, Leona, it isn't fair for you to have to do all this work. Oh, I don't mind, honey. Hey, I've got an idea. What are you going to do now? Well, this is where I keep my money so Diane and Dad can't find it. <laughs> you mean your father steals your money, too? Well, sure. But most of the time, he pays me back. <laughs> this is for you. Defrost it before you spend it. But, honey, I don't want your money. No, Leona, we've taken up your whole day. Dad would be mad if we didn't pay you. He says if you pay people for stuff, they can't take advantage of you. I don't think I said that right. Well, that's close enough, honey. I can't wait to meet that man. Yeah, you guys are just gonna love each other. Well, you go see how your sister's doing. I want to work on this oven a little bit. Okay. Girls, yoho. Anybody home? Where's that dingling that answered the phone? <laughs> Boy, of all the cornball accents. What was she doing? Smoking a banana? <laughs> Come on, Ruthie, give me an answer. Where's that big mouth? If I've got a big mouth, then you've got the Grand Canyon. <laughs> Who in the hell are you? I'm Leona Wilson, and don't you talk to me that way. Dad, this is the lady who took out the mouse and cleaned the house, and she made us do all our homework that those dumb teachers gave us. Yeah, wait a minute. Why did you answer my telephone? It was ringing. <laughs> well, what are you doing here in the first place? Your house was a mess, and your mouse was dead. <laughs> my mouse? Look, can we just uh, start at the beginning? Hi, Dad. I feel a lot better. You were sick? No. We have her in this robe because she's about to go three rounds with Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Ruthie, why didn't you call me? What for? She's in good hands. <laughs> she's fine. Thank you. Honey, just relax. She is relaxing. <laughs> Ruthie, a little explanation, please. Well, we met Leon in the hall, and she cleaned up the house. And the mouse. The mouse and the house. Every time we come to the mouse and the house, we come to a dead end. Now, did you do their work for them? Oh, I got paid. I asked you guys to clean the house, and you hire a maid? I am not a maid. I'm sorry. A housekeeper. You never should have hired this lady. 
Dad, it just kind of happened. We needed some help. What's wrong with that, Dad? Yeah, Dad, what's wrong with that? Yeah, Dad, what's wrong with that? All right. All right. Ruthie, sit down. Now, uh, Leona, is it? Miss Wilson. Miss Wilson, where did you come from? Well, near as I can figure, somewhere in Africa. <laughs> you see, one of my great granddaddies was out chopping some wood to make this little drum one day. <laughs> and along comes this nice old gentleman and says, how would y'all like to take a cruise to South Carolina? <laughs> oh, that's cute. Real cute. Well, thank you very much for helping the girls, but I think I can take over from here. Are you sure? Yes, I am sure. Well, you be sure and send a note to Diane's dumb teacher, because I don't think she should go to school tomorrow. Send a note to Diane's dumb teacher. I'll certainly do that for you. And Ruthie still has five pages to memorize from that play, so you get on her. Get on, Ruthie. Yes, thanks. I believe I can handle that. Dad, you're not being very nice. Well, I don't know how much nicer I can be. I'm taking orders from this strange lady who killed a mouse and then cleaned a house, and that's all I know. <laughs> Except that her great-great-grandfather could be Kunta Kinte. Very funny. Look, I'm sorry. I've had a bad day. I banged my foot, my watch is wrecked, and some jerk is still using my parking place. I wrote the idiot a note. A lot of good that'll do. You'll be happy to know that that idiot found your note. <laughs> Dear Park and Space Squatter, if you park here again, I'm gonna tear your distributor head out with my bare hands. And what I will do with your Zoss pipe defies description. <laughs> Affectionately, the mad tenant. <laughs> you are parking in my space, number 2C. Strange. The sign on your door reads to be. To be or not to be? That is not the question. <laughs> I park in 2C because there's a pole behind 2B and apartment 2C is vacant. Not anymore. I just moved in. <laughs> you live next door? Right. Goodbye, girls. <laughs> Bye, neighbor. <laughs> oh, Mr. Alder, there's a saying that's been passed down in my family. Before you kick a rhinoceros, be sure you have the right end. <laughs> No. Hey, I've got a great idea. Can we hire her? You gotta be kidding. It's only one reason I would hire her. That's so I could fire her. Dad, she did a great job and she's really nice. Yeah, maybe. I've told you guys a thousand times you shouldn't let strangers in the house. I mean, people may seem very nice at first, but then they come in here and get a load of our valuables. <laughs> What valuables? I thought you said mom and her lawyer got all the valuables. <laughs> if it's a stranger, should I let him in? <laughs> well, hiya, Morgan. Hiya, Ruthie. Hi, Diane. Am I the first one here? Oh, dear Lord. What's the matter? Is it the dress? The shoes? The hair? Oh, it's the interview. I forgot all about it. You forgot? Larry, they're going to be here in a minute. They? Mar Margot Shaw is a they? Oh, I thought I told you. She always travels with her photographer, her manager, and a blonde-headed man we don't explain. That's four people. Well, don't worry about it. All they expect is a cocktail or two and some hors d'oeuvres. Well, good luck. All I got's a five-pack and a sprouting onion. Larry, we gotta do better than that. Yeah, all right. Well, no, nobody panic. Uh, I'll just uh, put on my shoes and I'll go down and I'll, get, I'll buy some wine. Ruthie, go into your bedroom and get that salami you hide in there. <laughs> Diane, find some crackers and just uh, throw them on a dish. Oh, now, wait a minute, Larry. This is an important interview. You can't just throw some crackers on a dish. Boy, if you weren't so cheap, you'd have a maid and hot hors d'oeuvres. Hot hors d'oeuvres? I, I mean, I'm just learning pancakes. 
they're awful pancakes, but great frisbees. I know where we could get a maid. Ruthie, forget it. No, Dad, really. I bet Leona could whip up something. I'll go get her. R Ruthie, come back here. No, go, Ruthie. Listen, Margot Shaw is syndicated, Larry. My picture will... Your picture will be seen in over 400 cities. Look, I just can't ask the maid to help. Why not? Because he just called her an idiot. <laughs> oh, boy. There go 400 cities. All right, I'll tell you what. I'll go down and get the wine. You stay here in case they come. Oh, oh, Morgan, this is Leona. Oh, hi, Leona. Larry wants to talk to you. What's wrong? You find another mouse? <laughs> Actually, um, I just wanted to... Um... Apologize. <laughs> well, in a way, yes. Um, when I put that note on your car, I didn't know you were an idiot. <laughs> I didn't know you were one either. Well, now that we two idiots know each other, uh, I wonder if I could ask you to do me a favor. I'm giving a party tonight, and I would be very pleased if you'd come over. Oh, I'd be glad to. About what time? Well, just as soon as you can make it. What'll I wear? Oh, just a little white apron. A white what? <laughs> a little white apron. Are you talking about guest or maid? Well, I got enough guests. I was talking me. Uh, something tells me that I shouldn't be talking. Mr. Alder, I happen to be a school teacher. A school teacher? Why didn't you tell us? Yeah, why didn't you tell us? Nobody asked. But, Ruthie, when you saw me in the hallway with the basket, you just assumed that I was a maid, right? Well, I guess. I'm sorry. Oh, it's nothing to be sorry about, honey. There is nothing wrong with being a maid. It's just that the assumption shouldn't be so automatic, honey. And that's where you went wrong. Then why did you come in here and do all that housing and mousing? Well, there's nothing wrong with helping a neighbor. Where do you teach? Oh, I've just been transferred to Lowell Junior High. <laughs> that's where I go. Then I just might turn out to be one of those dumb teachers of yours. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> I should have left with the mouse. <laughs> Leona understands. Yeah, but I gave my teacher eight dollars to clean the house. Don't forget the nickel tip. <laughs> eight dollars and a nickel? Oh, well, we're even. Look in the refrigerator. There's orange juice for Diane, three pounds of ground round, and some broccoli. Eight dollars. What about the nickel? <laughs> Carrying charge for the mouse. <laughs> oh, Leona, am I glad you're here. Listen, they're downstairs, Larry. Take this, okay? I hope there's enough. I just grabbed some things at the corner. Uh, Morgan. Now, there's some wine and cheese and dips. Well, just do your magic with it, okay? Uh, cool, Morgan. Oh, that's them. Now, just remember, this is very important for Mr. Alder's career. Uh, don't you have a little apron? <laughs> yes, ma'am. I sure do. Morgan, she is not what she... Excuse me, Mr. Alder. Won't you please come in? Mr. Alder, your guests have arrived, and I'll be serving hors d'oeuvres momentarily. Thank you, Miss Wilson. Leona, baby. <laughs> Wait a minute, Leona. Uh, folks, I'd like you to meet our new next-door neighbor and friend, Miss Leona Wilson. Sunday, see Born to Run on Disney, followed by Sooner or Later, the tender story of a young girl who must learn the facts of life sooner or later. Then Weekend probes the illegal sweatshops of New York and smuggling across the Mexican border, Sunday. Next, Catch Brothers and Sisters, followed by Turnabout. It's Bedroom Bedlam when Sam and Penny spend a weekend at the old college fraternity house. Then Sweepstakes, all tonight on NBC. NBC.